Today's episode is going to be absolutely shocking. Oh, the dead joke. Yes, that's right, on today's episode we're going to add some shocks to the camper. After using the camper over well over a thousand kilometres, um, when it moves, when it hits a really big bump, the shell sort of, the springs control it and the shell sort of just goes over, it comes back and generally gets back to where it should be. By adding the shocks you'll dampen that movement so that when it does move it won't move as much um, and it'll come back very quickly. The first thought is because it's an off-road chassis, I need to go and get some beefy off-road shocks for it. The issue with that is when we're looking at a vehicle that could be up to four ton uh, or more on some of the four-wheel drives nowadays, so each shock is then rated at a ton, a thousand kilos. These are rated at 13 or 1600 for the two. I think it's 1600, so each one's rated at about 800, even though these are probably overvalved. However, um, when we lay them back, they don't, they're not as efficient. And with packaging on this, um, I'll go into that in a little moment, but um, I do have to lay them back slightly. The good thing about these shocks is they're an Alco shock, they're made for a trailer. They have a swivel ball on each end, which means that your top and bottom mount don't have to be parallel to each other. The shock can sort of lay over at an angle and still work efficiently. When we're putting these in, they suggest you lay them back at at least 15 degrees from uh, straight up and down. That's where they're meant to work well, but some of that comes into packaging. So the bottom mount just bolts onto the U-bolts and we've then got a fixed point of where we can mount the shock. So I'll mount up this bottom mount and then we'll discuss what we're doing with it. So we've got our bottom bracket on and we really didn't have a lot of say in where our bottom mount is. What Where we do have say is where our top mount is. Um, and looking at a lot of these old army trailers, there was one made with shock absorbers and they drilled through this top tube and mounted the top mount there. So we're doing the same here. If it was all right for them, it's all right for me. So we've got our bottom mount fitted, easy as as, and I suppose the first thought is, oh, let's just whack our shock on and mount it at 15 degrees, um, drill our mount, and we're right to go. Um, no. <laughs> What we don't want is the shock to be acting as a bump stop and we don't want it to be acting as a limiting strap when the axle drops either. So we want a little bit of play at full compression between here and here and when the axle drops right down we want a little bit of play left in the shock. That's the ideal place and the angle of the shock will work out depending on that. One thing is the more you lay these shocks down the less efficient they are. However, with packaging, you don't have a lot of say in that a lot of the time. So how do we measure what, at what length to put the shock and what angle to put it? Well, the angle will work itself out. The length of, the closed length of the shock will be the distance between your bump stop and where the bump stop hits. And this bottom mount, if that, if that's, um, So let's say we've got 130 mils between a little bit of compression on our bump stop and the plate. We measure up 130 from the middle of the bolt and that's where the middle of the bolt will be. So our shock needs to be actually at a closed distance up here somewhere. And then we've got to look at dropping the axle down and seeing if we've got enough play in the shock um, as an extended length. Luckily, I've already done that on the other side, so I'm gonna measure the shock length on the other side, make the shock the same, we should be able to just bolt it up to the bottom mount and that will dictate where we mount our top mount. So at rest this is the length of our the other side and that's how our shock will sit. So mirroring the other side this is where the shock sits so that we're not using it as a bump stop or a limiting strap. 
Um, it's probably laid back more than what I'd like, but with packaging, that's what we've got. Now with the top mount, I'll just go over this again. Um, they do give you a weld on mount, which you could weld on here. However, looking at a lot of these old X-Army trailers, there was a version of this that did have shock absorbers and they just drilled a hole and welded a bolt through this, um, this bar that holds the front and rear mounts for the spring. So if it was okay for them, it'll be okay for me. So this is how I'm gonna mount it. Um, I'll put the bolt through, do it up and test drive it and then I'll come back and weld it all up. I'll just mount that away from the floor slightly. And drill a pilot hole. So after installing the shocks and going for a quick test drive, what's it like? It's good, much better. There's a lot less weight transfer and you notice that if you flick the back of the trailer out going along, um, before if you flick the back out, you could see the actual cabin of the camper move. Um, now it doesn't and because of that, the, the trailer writes itself back into a straight line a lot easier. Um, if you're going around a tight corner at any sort of speed, um, it doesn't load up the outside wheel of the, the trailer so much. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot more supple than what it was. So all in all, I'd say it's a really good uh, outcome. But all that said, I still think it can be made better. So um, keep an eye out for future episodes. But that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you next time. Bye now.